Hello everybody, I hope you're all well today. All the usual stuff out of the way first. Thank you very much for tuning in, it is appreciated. If it's the first time watching this channel or you're a regular viewer, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It's interactions like that that help this channel stay well up in the YouTube rankings and just as, if not more importantly, it's customers, not just visitors to our website, our Optics Weekend or asking questions over the phone, further advice normally, it's customers that mean that this channel can continue, can continue and I can add new products and come up with new ideas. Talking of new products, not a, a new telescope, but it's the first time I've had a look at it. The Skywatcher Mercury 607 2.4 inch or 60mm refractor. And this is quite a long focal length, it's 700mm, which is 11.66. And that, that will mean that it will give less uh, aberrations than or false colour than some of the short tube ones, the budget ones that you may get. And I'll just show you something on the mount first, which is a very, very basic AZ mount. So it's not the one you get with the Star, Tra the, uh, Star Travel 80 or, or the Star Travel 102. It is a very lightweight tripod and so, you know, and it's priced accordingly. At the time of this video, it's well, you know, it's under £90. So it's a real beginner scope. On the mount, you'll notice this bar here, in case you're not sure what it's for. And what you can do, you can slacken it off here and move it up and down very freely. Your left and right tension is there, but for up and down, you can do that. When you get it near to what you're looking at, you then tighten that up. And then with this screw here, you can turn it for minor adjustments for up and down. So, oh there we are, still in view. Comes with a basic 5x24 um, inverted image finder scope. And, and again, that helps keep the cost down. Comes with uh, modified achromatic eyepieces of 20mm and 10mm, giving 35 and 70 times. It, uh, it also comes with a Barlow lens, which I'll come on to shortly, and a 1.4 erect image eyepiece. So, the, the two eyepieces that you get, I'll just change the, change the angle. Oh, still in view. The two eyepieces that give you 35 and 70. To be honest with you, that's enough. Uh, to push the magnification with, with such a lightweight mount, you might be a bit disappointed, especially if it's a bit windy and uh, in between focusing, you're going to have to allow time for it to steady down. But with that, you, you, it's perfect if you're if you want to look at the craters and mountains on the moon, um, the phases of Venus. The, you, you may just see, the, well you will, you, you see the, the rings around Saturn, the planet will be small but you will see them and maybe one or two of the moons and also you will see the two main cloud belts on Jupiter and its four brightest moons. It will bring out the colours of stars much better, it will split a lot of double stars, my f personal favourite uh, target to look at, objects to look at and even some of the, the brighter star clusters, nebula and galaxies from a dark sky location. So it's an ideal stepping stone, a very first telescope that, that for the price won't let you down. Now I mentioned, I'll just get it, the Barlow lens, excuse me, total professional, and uh, probably can't see it very well there. Now I felt with this Barlow lens it's going to take you up to 140 times, but I found with this particular Barlow lens and this scope, I could not get the um, focuser to travel inwards enough to get infinity focus. I could get mid-distance focus, and so what I had to do was remove the diagonal, and so you can then use the Barlow, but uh, it will be an upside-down image. But what we also have, i come on to my thought, well, I'm not sure about that, why they put a Barlow lens that doesn't work with the diagonal, but, but I, I like to be honest, I like to be up front. Um, I don't think anyone's mentioned it before, so it's surely not just me. But uh, yeah, you will have to remove the diagonal. But as I mentioned before, 35 and 70 times for this telescope, this lightweight tripod, 
that is ideal. You, you don't need any more magnification than that, believe me. You'll bring the subject closer, but whether or not you'll be able to pick out any more detail, probably not. But what you also get is this. This is a 1.5 times erect image eyepiece. And with this one, you do remove the diagonal. And so you've been putting it in similar to that. And so you'd use that for if you're looking, uh, if you've got a nice view from, from your back garden, across the fields, etc. You, you pull up next to the sea or an estuary and you want to look at the ships at sea. Absolutely ideal for that. I have found, um, I think it's my budget optical hardware Barlow lens that does work with this without removing the diagonal. So, and looking at terrestrial objects with this scope just now, I'm very impressed. Yes, it's, it's a fully coated 60mm objective lens with modified achromatic eyepieces. So the image is, you know, it does show some chromatic aberration. It's a little bit soft, but it's not three, four, five hundred pounds. It's just under ninety pounds, and for the price, you can't really grumble at that. A terrific little lightweight scope just takes minutes to set up. The diagonal it comes with, by the way, is a mirror one. So, as it is now set up, the image will be left to right opposite but that that is not a problem the image will be erect and uh, so that's a, a quick look around the Skywatcher Mercury 2.4 inch or 60 millimeter f11.66 refractor don't be put off by the Barlow situation believe me with this scope and from 40 years of using telescopes 35 and 70 magnification for this scope considering the lightweight tripod is absolutely ideal so uh, you can always upgrade the Barlow at a later date and I'll be here to advise you on that so as always uh, the thank you very much for watching again and I shall see you next time